Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. I'm very excited to make individual garlic herb boisson souffles for you. And they have their own little like bowl like shell at a filo dough. They are so spectacularly impressive. Your friends, your family, they won't believe you made them. They're gonna ask you, where did you buy them? How do I get some? And they're super easy to make. And it's a real souffle, and it's super, super fun to make too. So before I get started, I want you to click the notification button so you can see all my videos and lots of future tips. And future videos, all my previous ones and in the future. There's many, many. So let's get started. So if you've never worked with phyllo dough before, it comes in the freezer section uh, at the grocery store sort of near the frozen fruit or the ice cream and um, frozen whip topping. And what you wanna do is put it in your refrigerator the night before you wanna use it so it thaws, but always keep it refrigerated. It is extremely brittle when it dries. It's almost like a strudel dough. And if you've ever made homemade strudel dough, it's not quite, uh, it, it's thinner than your strudel dough because it's made with a machine, but it's amazing. So you have to prepare a little bit. So I want you to get six sheets of phyllo dough, and it usually comes pretty standard sized, all right? And you put it on a sheet pan, and then I cover it with plastic wrap, and then this is a moistened, clean kitchen towel that I keep on top. So we don't want to dawdle, because we need to make our shells for, that our souffles are gonna go in. So I'm gonna take one piece, of phyllo dough, make sure it's one piece because they're literally the size of an ancient papyrus <laughs> piece of paper that the ancient Egyptians would have. And now you're gonna come back, don't be lazy and cover it up. All right, cover it up and you're going to take some melted butter. All right, you may need, some, sometimes you may need a little bit more melted butter, so I say about four tablespoons. You can even use oil if you'd like it, like a neutral oil, uh, like canola, or you could even use um, melted down coconut oil, or you can even use olive oil. And I'm gonna Jackson Pollock it. See what I'm doing? Because it's, it's gonna rip. And we don't care if it rips, because we're gonna, we're gonna put three sheets together for structure. So when you have a good amount of oil on there, you're just gonna gently, and you have to be gentle. All right, this is a good time to be gentle. You're not painting a fence. You're being very gentle. And then what you're gonna do is, once you get all this covered, and you do want it all covered with oil, and then we're gonna cut it into four and a half inch squares, four and a half inch long squares, and put it in a standard muffin tin that has been sprayed with nonstick cooking spray, or you can butter it if you want to. All right, I'm gonna uncover and do my thing again with my phyllo, I'm gonna get my second sheet, all right. So we're gonna get, the, and you wanna put it exactly on top so I can get a little, a little uh, strange here, but good enough. Put your plastic wrap back. Again, you know the routine, cover it up because otherwise it will dry out. Do it again. So what do we have? Two sheets now. We're gonna go for three. And then once we have three, we're gonna take a ruler and we're gonna measure out and cut with a pizza wheel. If you wanna cut with a sharp knife, I like to do a pizza wheel because I won't rip this delicate phyllo, it's very delicate. It's very delicate. These are wonderful individual souffles. I've made them as an appetizer before a fancy dinner party. I've made them for a Mother's Day brunch and nothing says lovin' to your mama like a garlic and herb individual boisson souffle. I mean it. If you, if you wanna really get your stock up, do it, do it. Your mama will thank you. You will thank me. They're amazing. All right, one more, and then we have our third. Okay, our thir thirds, or threesome. Okay, so if it rips a little, don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about it because it won't matter. There you go. Now we're going to flip this over. Sometimes phyllo will rip. You're going to be as careful as you can. All right, one more little dousing. And you're going to do this set of three. You're going to do it again. Once we cut these, we're going to start over again. Um, and I, I'm just going to, I just showed you this uh, particular threesome once, and then you can do the remainder yourself. So you're going to end up making uh, about 8 to 10 to 12 souffles, depending. Muffin, muffin tins, even though they're standard size, and that's what you want. Uh, vary a little bit so depending on how you cut your here's my straight edge and i'm going to cut uh cut these into my four and a half inch squares so it's about four and a half inches i'm going to go straight down I'm just going to eyeball it okay and i'm only going to do a few so you can see how i do them straight down and you may have a little bit left over um, or you may so this one's a little bit shy a little bit short all right so now I also want four and a half inches here so about right here I'm just going to show you how to do one and then I'm going to go straight and it doesn't matter if they're perfect because watch what happens so I'm going to move my Beautiful phyllo out of the way. I'm going to move. Gather up your little, your little package. Put it into your cup. And just get it in, in a way that it sort of looks like folded paper, because that's the fun of it. That's the sort of cool part of it. It's this little package, this little flaky package. And sort of open it up, open it up. And then what I like to do, it's almost going to be like you're baking uh, a pie blind. I'm going to do one more just so I get it in there. And if it rips, don't worry about it. Hold it together. And you can put one after the other, one next to each other. Just make sure that when they fold open, almost like petals of a flower, all right, you're just going to make sure that they don't stick to each other. And push it all the way down to the bottom. You see that? All the way down. And then I like to take a little parchment paper that I've pre-cut, and I'm going to put them into each one. You see that? I've actually just sort of pushed it into each one. And then I always have baking, baking beans. These are beans that I would never eat. They are raw, dried beans that I just use for this type of thing to bake blind. I just want to keep this open so we have a nice, beautiful space for our souffle base to go in. All right? So I'm going to continue making these for as much as I have uh, in phyllo. So three sheets layered with the butter or oil. I'm going to do it again uh, with three more sheets, and that's it for a total of six sheets. And then I'm going to bake these. You don't want to make really any more than 12 cups, but you may want to have a few extra in case we don't fill all of them. And they're delicious with anything else inside as well. You're going to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and bake them for about eight minutes. They're going to get a little brown, but again, they're going to get baked again. So our phyllo cups have come out of the oven. They look fabulous. And now we're ready to make our souffle base. And that starts usually um, with a uh, bechamel or a roux where milk has been added. And we're going to melt two tablespoons of butter. All right, we're going to melt two tablespoons of butter. And then once that has melted, we're going to add two tablespoons of flour. So a roux is typically um, the same volume or weight of fat and flour. And we're going to get this melted. All right. And then we're going to mix it uh, until it the flour is absorbed by the butter, and then you're going to end up cooking the starch out a little. So equal parts, two tablespoons of fat and flour. All right. Nothing too crazy. All right. And then we're going to take, you notice I'm just sort of cooking that starch out. Turn down the heat. I have a really hot cook plate, but on your 
on your stove, just make sure it doesn't go too high. And then we're going to slowly add in three quarters of a cup of whole milk and you're gonna whisk as you do it, all right? We whisked out the starch and we're gonna go into the sides. We don't want any lumps, and bumps. And I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit. Get that in, go all around the edges, all right? And this is gonna thicken, that's why uh, that flour was in there, it's going to thicken. This is our bechamel. This is actually known as a bechamel. It's a French sauce, one of the French mother sauces. And we're going to turn it in basically to a cheese sauce and then fold in some yolks. And then we're going to create a meringue with the whites of the eggs that we use. So we're just going to get that. You notice it's thin now. I'm going all around the, not the edges, but around where the floury stuff could, could actually get stuck. We're gonna get that nice and piping hot so that it thickens. Flour and cornstarch, they need to really get to a boil before they thicken. So you wanna really get this thick. It's not gonna get too thick. It's not gonna get thick like a pudding, but you're gonna notice it's already getting thick now. All right. Once this gets thick, you're going to take it off the heat and you're going to add some ingredients and I'll show you what you're going to add. And that's what's, you see how nice and sort of creamy it looks? All right. All right, so we're going to let it go for another couple of seconds and I'm going to shut off my burner. Now you would have to slide it off your burner. My burner shuts off immediately. So what I want to do now so I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. If you don't like it, you can leave it out, but it's beautiful with that, uh, with that bourson. Two egg yolks, and the whites are waiting in an electric mixing bowl because we have to make the other part of the souffle, which is uh, the egg foam or the meringue from the whites. And then we're going to add a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, shredded, finely shredded. Oh my goodness, the smell is so delicious, the aroma. Yum, yum, yum. And then two thirds cup of yummy bourson, garlic and herb, my favorite, my favorite. And you're just gonna whisk that in. The, the bourson should melt down. And once you have this, this is no different than a pudding. And sometimes you can end up with a pudding, you see like a skin on it. So we're not gonna use this for a minute. We wanna fold it in with our egg white meringue in a minute, because we have to beat that up with our whip attachment. So I'm gonna take this off the heat. I'm gonna pour it into a bowl. All right, I'm going to pour it into a bowl. And this is a Pyrex bowl, so it's heat proof. It's not going anywhere hot, but I really don't want a regular bowl to crack. I get all this out. Sorry about that. I'm left-handed, so I have to turn away from you. Get it all out. Now, because it does have milk in it, uh, and it is... It is a bechamel. I'm going to take a piece of plastic wrap and just like a pudding, because of the casein, that protein in milk, I'm going to put it directly on the bechamel sauce, this, this beautiful bourson uh, base uh, before we mix it in. And I'm just going to leave it at room temperature because I am going to make my meringue. Now, if you want to do this a day ahead, you can do it to this point a day ahead and just get your meringue ready right before you're ready to bake it. So now I'm ready to make my egg foam or my meringue. So that is that part of the souffle base that's gonna help our souffle to rise. And that's the egg white, and that holds a lot of air. So th this base, you know, the bechamel with the cheese and the egg yolks, it had two egg yolks. This meringue, I'm putting in three egg whites. All right, I wanna get a little extra lift. And I'm gonna try to get 12 because these beautiful phyllo cups made so many, depending on how I cut them, and they came out great. So I'm gonna see if I can get 12 made. I'm gonna let her rip. I'm going on warp speed. You don't wanna over whip them. 
but nothing's going in them. Like usually we put in sugar for a baked good that's sweet. So this is a savory, a savory type of thing, a savory souffle. So we have to watch that we don't overbeat. There's nothing else going in with those whites. You want a rubber spatula and you have your beautiful bechamel. We're gonna take our plastic wrap off. And even if it's warm, it's perfect to be folded in. All right, so we're getting there, but I really want these egg whites to get nice and foamy. We want stiff peaks without looking like laundry detergent. All right, you know what I'm talking about. You don't want to overbeat them because overbeating, you won't be able to mix them in. All right, just about there. Okay. Remember, this is what we're doing. This is where we're coming with our beautiful, okay, real nice, real nice. I like to see that. See that beautiful foam? Okay. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Spock method of mixing. You know Mr. Spock from Star Trek. I always like to do this. So I'm going to take about a third, just guess, about a third of the egg whites. So we're going to actually sacrifice um, the needs of a few for the needs of the many. So now we're going to whisk this. So we're actually going to lose some of the air because we're going to lighten up our base. Mr. Spock always liked to save as many people as possible. What a good guy, right? I miss Leonard Nimoy. All right. So now I'm going to get rid of this whisk, and I'm going to use my rubber spatula completely. I'm going to put it in, and now I'm going to fold the ma majority, which is two-thirds of my egg whites, in until... I fold them in so you're going to cut down the middle and around, cut down the middle and around. But you want to do it as little as possible because you don't want to lose that foam. You don't want to lose the air bubbles, okay? You will lose a few, all right? It just happens, all right? You don't want pockets of the white meringue. You just want to see just about there, all right? And just I'm just sort of going on top because I see some pockets of egg white. There we go. And you will lose a little. Don't worry about it. Now I'm going to take my beautiful, I have 12. I'm going to see if I can make 12. I have a quarter cup measure. You can use a spoon if you want. I have a little uh, coarsely ground pepper and I have another, about a third of a cup of Parmesan cheese. All right. If you want to leave it off, you can, um, but it's so good. So I'm going to take a quarter of a cup and I'm going to gingerly put them very gently into my cups and they are going to puff up and impress your mama if you make them for mother's day i promise you your stock will be up your mother will be like you made this for me oh my goodness oh you must love me so much and say yes mom i love you so much so these are such a crowd pleaser and I said, depending on how much, uh, how big you cut your phyllo um, and how big your muffin cups are. Some muffin cups are a little bit uh, smaller than others. Some are bigger than others. So it depends. Your extra phyllo, if you have any, you can actually just bake it off for about eight minutes at that 375 and just eat it with some extra bourson or just put it, uh, you know, and crunch it over a salad or something. That would be amazing. So you're just going to take about a scoop full of this, all right, and you're going to go into each one. I think I'm going to get 12, folks. I'm going to get 12. And these are also great for breakfast. You just want to heat them up in the oven. You don't want to put them in the microwave because your phyllo may get mushy. And we don't like mushy phyllo. We like it crisp. We like it yummy and crisp. All right. Yep. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Chef Sokol's going to get 12. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm going to have to scrape the bottom of the barrel for this one. But we got it. We got it. We got it. All right. 
So I'm just going to go in very carefully. Don't, you don't want it to go over the phyllo. Okay, there you go. All right. A little bit of black pepper. First, I'm going to do my parm. A little bit of parm. And I have raised my oven to 400. Not, three, not 375, 400. And these are going to bake for about 15 minutes. If you ever did this ahead, again, you can make your bechamel first, your cheese uh, bechamel sauce first, and then make your egg foam or your egg whites the day you want to serve it. And you can actually make your little cups ahead too. Just leave them uh, air, in an airtight container or leave them right in your muffin pans. That would be perfectly fine. You could lightly cover them. You don't want to touch them too much with a plastic wrap because they'll crumble. They're so crispy. All right. And if you don't like pepper, I'll put pepper on some and not on the others. All right. Just in case mama doesn't like it spicy. So 15 minutes in the oven. See you back. It's been 15 minutes. I smell my souffles and they've been beeping. I'm a coming. Wait till you see this. Got to be a little gentle. Take one out at a time. Oh, look at them. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, oh, yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Full of bursant. Oh, yum. They are incredible. The ones with the pepper and the ones without the pepper. Now, so if you give this to your mom or make it for your Easter guests, right? Anything. You serve it as soon as it comes out. You can let it sit for like a minute because they're going to be hot. And what I do is just gingerly lift them out. And we will take one per person. You can put even a little salad on the side or just the way they are. And if you made them in mini muffin cups, you could serve them as a little appetizer. Let's serve one with pepper. Oh, look at these. And they're piping hot. And they're so brown and so full of cheesy goodness. If you make these for mom or you make these for somebody you love, you can have whatever you want. So I hope you enjoy these. I hope you make these beautiful individual souffles. And I will see you next time. Take care.